Hello and welcome, I'm Zach Lane from Community Health, bringing you our Unity Through Community video blog, because your health is our mission. In this week's segment, I'm joined by Jason Kiker, a licensed clinical social worker at Community Health Rutland, and we'll be discussing ways to recognize and cope with anxiety in the new normal created by the COVID pandemic. It's great to see you, Jason. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Zach. I really appreciate this opportunity, and I uh, think it's a really important topic to be speaking about, especially during this COVID pandemic. Definitely. All right, so we'll jump right in. First question I wanted to ask you is, how can people go about recognizing and acknowledging anxiety in themselves and those close to them? Good question. So with COVID-19, there's been a lot of uncertainty created within the community. Uh, and with that, a lot of anxiety has been created. So in answering your question, how to recognize anxiety, a lot of times what we're going to notice is as we're going throughout our day, we might start to experience what I call intrusive thoughts, where it just might be kind of these thoughts that pop into our head and they're, they kind of look like what ifs, like, well, what if this happened or what if that happened? And, you know, that's a big, that's a big sign that anxiety is starting to mount. The, the way that I kind of look at it is when it starts to become intrusive, it's the point where it's, you, you can't get rid of the thoughts and they keep percolating in the mind over and over and over again. And a big way that this is seen, one way I've seen it illustrated and kind of in real life is a lot of times when people are going to bed, they're reflecting on their day, they're reflecting on kind of what's been happening throughout the day. And this is a moment to unwind for a lot of people. If this moment is being plagued by these intrusive thoughts, you're having these what if thoughts, you're thinking about the pandemic, so on and so forth, it's probably a good indicator that you have raised anxiety. In addition to that, as you're trying to go to bed and as you're trying to sleep, it starts to interfere with your sleep. So that's, that's one of the most common places you see it interfering is sleep. It can also interfere just in daily life, such as going to work or interactions with people. If you start noticing these intrusive thoughts, the what ifs, as I call them, as a lot of other people call them, if they start coming in, it's a good sign that anxiety is starting to mount and you want to kind of start working on it and, and managing it. That's great. So when people start to notice those what ifs or the anxiety, what are some sort of activities or practices they could go about doing to help cope with that? Good question. So the first thing is the acknowledgement of it. Just acknowledging this is my, this is anxiety that I'm experiencing and actually putting a label to it that starts to create um, more comfort with addressing it because we now know what it is. We know it's anxiety. When I work with children and adolescents, I actually have them give a name to the anxiety. So they're not owning the anxiety. They're not saying, I'm an anxious child. They're saying, I have this anxiety monster that visits me and causes me these problems. Um, and I know that might sound kind of juvenile, but in reality, that could also work for adults at times. Yeah. But, <laughs> so in recognizing that, it, it's important to talk to someone about it, process the anxiety, explore what your fears are, are the fears rational or are they irrational? And whether or not they're irrational or rational, there, there's, there's validity in both ends. So that's why it's important to discuss them. And then as you're discussing them, you can talk about the options to how to reduce anxiety or address the fears that are being prompted by the anxiety. Um, so, so the big key here is communication, talking to someone. That's, yeah, I think when we've talked before, you mentioned how uh, people, they notice all the signs of it they just can't put the name of anxiety to it so sort of that realizing what it is is that huge first step definitely absolutely um, so we touched on COVID a little bit already so with the way that's changing the world it's not necessarily as easy for people to come in and see you or see other people so what are some things they can do by themselves or at home going outside to help cope yeah so with COVID-19 right now the normal is totally been turned upside down. We have a new normal, if you will. And, and that's, that's causing the anxiety is we're not sure what that new normal looks like. So one of the things that we need to do for ourselves is create normalcy within our lives by any which way we can. And one big way we can do that within our home lives is by creating and adhering to a structure, you know, whether that's a thing of uh, regular exercise routine, um, a eating schedule, whatever, just something that gives you some structure to sort of 
count on, say, okay, you know, tomorrow I'm going for a bike ride or tomorrow I know I'm going to go kayaking. Just something that gives you some structure because right now the, the ever flowing change that happened with COVID kind of reduces the structure that's provided by society with those elements. So therefore that's why it's important to provide that structure at home. Uh, another option is always therapy. Therapy is a really great way for individuals to connect. And I heard you mention a lot of people are stuck at home. And right now, one of the great things that community health is offering is we offer telehealth sessions. So I, I've been doing that. A lot of other clinicians have been doing that. And that's a great way for clients to connect without leaving their home and even being exploring that care. Um, one other thing that I like to kind of give to clients and to individuals, even family members who are struggling with anxiety, it's a cognitive behavioral therapy strategy, and it's called the five, four, three, two, one strategy. I always have to be careful when I'm holding my hand. But so the way it works out is it really counts on the individual's ability to use their senses. So what they do is they name five things they can see, four things they can physically feel, three things they can uh, hear, two things they can smell, and one thing they can taste. And as they're doing that, and they're going through the exercise, you, the individuals want to be describing the items, if it's something you can see or hear, or so on and so forth. They want to be describing it as though they're describing it as someone who lacks that sense. Not ad nauseum to the point where they're describing every iota of the uh, object, but just enough so if I was blind, I'd be able to understand what the person was seeing. And what that does is that serves as kind of a distraction from the anxiety and it kind of cuts off the anxiety or the racing thoughts and allows the anxiety to reduce a little bit. And once again, I know I said it kind of fast. It's five things you can see, four things you can physically feel, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. And I know taste is a hard one. So I tell people, you know, carry a pack of gum in your, in your pocket. If you don't have pack gum, describe the taste of what it feels like in your mouth when it's dry and just kind of go from there. And a lot of people have reported this really kind of, it doesn't get rid of the thoughts, but reduces the urgency of the thoughts. And that's really what drives anxiety is those urgency of thoughts. Um, Good. Definitely seems like it helps you, you focus and calm down, sort of collect yourself. That seems great. Yeah, it's a grounding strategy. It's a wonderful strategy, actually. All right. Well, Jason, it's been incredible. Uh, thanks again for your time, your great insight here. Um, and then thank you for everyone watching this episode of Community Health's video blog. If you're interested in learning more about our programs and services, you can check out our website at chcrr.org. Community Health, where your health is our mission.